Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Baka Baka Baka. We are an anime podcast. Every two weeks, we watch an anime. We come together on this podcast. We discuss it. We turn the discussion over to you. That's the entire concept. It should be simple to understand, and yet the my co-hosts get confused every time. Um, every time. <laughs> every time. We are discussing, in this episode, the first 12 episodes of Fire Force, and in our next episode, we'll be discussing the rest of it. So, later on, there will be spoilers for that, but we're going to both do introductions and then do non-spoiler reviews. So, that's what you have to look forward to. Uh, the first co-host I have, he is the Drew Barrymore to my fire starter, Jeremy. How are you doing? Oof, that's dated reference. Yeah. Somehow it's it's not as difficult for me to remember the second time around. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Um, this week's just been kind of crazy because of all of the coronavirus stuff with school changing schedules and and yeah. Um, otherwise, otherwise pretty good. We've got a game that we're trying to work on right now, and I've been building the mechanics for it in Unity, which is pretty cool, but. Yeah, I guess we've been playing a lot more HOTS. That's been really nice. Yeah, we got to hang out and stuff. It's been nice. Yeah. We only silver lining. <laughs> also have the prodigy to my fire starter, my little fire starter. Jason, how are you doing? Uh, fantastic. Um, what have I been doing? Well, actually, you didn't <laughs> ask me, so. Yeah. Uh, Jason. <laughs> Outside of Paths of Exile, which has taken away almost all your time, oh, what literally. are you doing? <laughs> doing pretty good, besides HOTS. Um, we, yeah. uh, Troy got me to try my first Call of Duty game. Uh, the Battle Royale actually been pretty fun. Um, it's no Fortnite, but... Uh, what? Just a, a, a clarification. I did not get you. Like I sent out a message, hey guys, this game is now free to play. <laughs> I obviously have been playing Call of Duty for a decade now. Just let you know if there's something you want to try, let me know. Like no arm twisting, no like, hey, go download this now. <laughs> um, basically, uh, he's he private messaged me and said, uh, if you don't play this with me, you don't get to come on the podcast anymore. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I am a tyrant. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, one thing I need to keep in mind though when I play games like this is that if I learn a mechanic. I need to keep that in mind for when I take actions. So, like, when I see a, someone's in a vehicle, I see a red vehicle driving around my mini-map. If I jump in a vehicle, other people are going to see the same thing. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, that, uh, that started a little war. You started a war in the middle of an airfield, and I watched from a wall like this. <laughs> I, I remember Always... call, I called out to you, you're, you're, what are you doing? That's crazy. You're like, I'm going to be fine. Ow, ow. Okay, they see me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna get to the thing. They won't even know I'm. Oh God. Uh, and my name is Troy. I don't have any powers myself. Uh, I've been watching on Netflix. They added B Stars, uh, which is really interesting. It's about a shy wolf feeling urges towards a promiscuous bunny, but it's mostly murder. He wants to eat her. Uh, because carnivores aren't allowed to eat meat in this world, and that's all they want to do. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like furries. There is an element of furries um, want to eat meat. <laughs> there's <laughs> one. Right. There is one episode <laughs> apparently, which I haven't even got to yet. That it, that might be in play. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, one of the things that's keeping me watching because I I was just curious. I wanted to see what the first couple episodes are. I can't tell if it's a high school drama, a noir mystery, or a star-crossed romance. Hmm. It, it's kind of just odd, but it's beautifully animated in a CG. Uh, the the characters are really interesting. Better than I, Zootopia. I actually am liking it better than thinking. Zootopia, but I do like Zootopia. But it's it's uh it's got a very different take on the whole carnivores because the carnivores actually do want to kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, in at the end of the year choice, you'll you'll be able to pick that one and make us watch it. Uh, no, the whole reason I started watching it myself was because I'm like, I don't think I could put this on the, the <laughs> Uh, also, my daughter came upstairs today, tears in her eyes, and I, I was like, what was wrong? She's like, I just finished watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I'm like, I just brought her in for a big hug. Like, we're going to get through this. You've been on a journey. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, she, she's my emotional one, and, and I knew going in she was going to have a tough time, but she got through the whole thing. All right. Let's talk about the anime that we have all been watching over the past two weeks and definitely not rushing through in the last couple of days. Um, <clears throat> Don't worry about it. Don't worry nope. about it. Nope. We've all been busy with coronavirus <laughs> scene and hoarding, hoarding toilet paper. By the way, it's the <laughs> beginning of the outbreak in case, you know, four years from now when most people yeah. are dead. Okay, maybe that went a little bit. <laughs> you guys remember the first uh, Michael Keaton Batman? Yes. And, and when yeah. Joker's product hit the stage, and then, like the the news anchors were all messed up, I imagine that's like how we're gonna look in like a month, still doing this podcast, be like, we're still alive. <laughs> the podcast will continue. My, my favorite line from that is the uh, "Where does he get those wonderful toys?" <laughs> all right, let's talk about Fire Force, guys. <laughs> Episodes one through twelve. Jason, you picked it. What is your non-spoiler review of it? Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, it's pretty good. It's there's a lot of stuff that's been done before, um, so that's a little bit of a downside because uh, you know I'm not a big fan of the I'm gonna beat you and to being my friend, but of course we have that, uh, and it it does have a lot of shonen tropes as we go along. But I'm enjoying the overarching story. Um, I really like the world building that they've done because I guess the majority of the world is on fire and there's just a few human strongholds. Um, yeah. I like the, uh, you know, and some of the characters I, I really enjoy watching in this particular scene, but yeah, it's uh, it, a lot of it's been done before. And also the, the what oh God, so some of the sciencey stuff that they try to explain and then oh, they God. break their own sciencey stuff <laughs> really gets to me. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, I'm I'm actually looking forward to the next twelve episodes. It's uh it's been fun. All right, Jeremy, how about you? Um yeah, for me this is this is a very uh frivolously fun anime. <laughs> like I agree with everything Jason said. It's it's uh it's got some beautiful combat scenes. I really like the way that the protagonist fights, his mobility. It's just it's really cool. I like some of the ideas that it brings up, especially for, for character designs. Some of the justifications for, well, character expressions, for one. Um, but overall, I, I, it just kind of feels uh, a bit boring when it's not uh, when it's not being either gratuitously funny and full of fan service or trying to be melodramatic and then undercutting itself with more fan service. <laughs> it's just the wrong time sometimes. It's not always good with knowing when to give you the fan service. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I'm finding it pretty middling. This is uh, created by the same guy who did Soul Eater, uh, which I was a big fan of. And, and I do kind of enjoy the style they go for and how stylized it is. But I agree with you guys. It, it's not really bringing anything new to the shonen genre, except for maybe the world building, which we'll you know, be talking about in the spoiler section. There's elements I like. It's just nothing's really that new nothing's really nothing's re raising the bar higher like my hero academia does and even like food wars as a shonen to me is raises the bar because they tried to do something completely different and turn food into battles instead of fist <laughs> cuffs um whereas this is just like hey everyone's got basically the same a different variation of the exact same power and they're all just gonna battle and i, I like we got through 12 episodes without a training scene kind of <laughs> Sort of. um, I yeah. think I'm really appreciating that it's actual fire that they use in creative ways instead of dancing or basketball <laughs> or yeah. love triangles. Trying to complain about something? Are you trying to? Are you trying to make everyone take a shot for you complaining about his neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you guys want to get a Star Wars insult in while we're at it? <laughs> just just get it out no, of the way. These characters, these characters had more development than that. We won't go there. Now that Jason's <laughs> remembered to press record and we've done all this over again. <laughs> oh, 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 out. oh, man. <laughs> Shoving that knife in. Okay. Uh, what would you guys like think? Oh, <laughs> opening and closing. What would you guys think? They were okay. Very middling. I actually really liked them. I was shocked because the uh, uh, when I when I saw the first... When I saw the intro for the first time, it, it totally didn't fit the sound to me at all. Like the music seemed like it was playing to something and the scenes that were going by were, were just not connected to it in the least bit. And the reason for that is because I've been listening to that song on Pandora without having any connection to it being from this anime for, for a long time, months. And uh, yeah, and I realized that because I, I turned to Tanya and I said, hey, does this does this sound seem to like go with this? Does it fitting for you? Just, yeah, it's great. But yeah, absolutely love it. Um, and the the outro, the song was really really good every time. Like when it would start, I don't know. There was there's like an intro to the song that was really good, and then it just became normal. But then I'm just the sound guy. <laughs> uh, I like the intro. I like the song well enough. Uh, but I thought. The the little mini story that plays out in the intro, this like one mission that the whole team goes on, showcases each of their powers a little bit. Um, and it gives you a really good introduction to the team. I, I thought it was really cool. Um, the outro had some fan service in it. Yeah, <laughs> it also had a, it also had a sad story too. Yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that that probably bugged me about the outro is like this was hardly touched. I mean, it's it's an element of the story, but it's very minor and i'm like this is a lot for just this one outro for the whole 12 episodes yeah. agreed okay we're gonna go on to our spoiler section here so again we're only spoiling episodes 1 through 12 if you've seen past that we're gonna make guesses about what's coming up and we're gonna be wrong uh <laughs> you just need to live with that uh but if you want to see it for yourself and don't want us to ruin us this would be a good place to hop off the podcast train Make sure you come back though after you watch it. <laughs> ding ding ding. Nah, dude. We are we already we got your click. We got your view. We're good. Wow, that's right. <laughs> no, not the down one. Not the down one. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hitting the thumbs down? Stop. Um all right, so spoiler Smash section. That like button. This takes place in Tokyo, which we will find out later is one of the last refuges refuge Yeah, refuges. Refuges. Is that refugees or at refuges? <laughs> I think that's a word. Is that a word? <laughs> I think it How is. do you have refuge. multiple refuge? <laughs> refuge is the last. What the last? What's the one of the last yeah. refuge? Yeah. What's the plural refuges. of refuge? Refuges. <laughs> this uh, is not worth <laughs> discussing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's one of the last safe places on Earth <laughs> from a world of fire. Um, and also, there's this problem where people are spontaneously combusting into fire monsters. Uh, and this is dealt with by a mingling of army, firefighters, the Catholic Church, and t corporations called the Fire Force. Uh, which are a group that kill what are called infernals, which are humans who have spontaneously combusted. To both put their soul to rest and stop them from, you know, fire. And and that's how we start our first episode with a man just going on a train and he catches on fire. The fire force comes and kills him. Uh, this they like they bring a literally bring a nun with them to pray for the the victim while they kill him. And while this is happening, our main character is standing in the train station watching. Uh, kind of gets shoved aside. And then he sees some debris about to fall into the nun. He springs into action by igniting his feet on fire, flying across the room and saving her from falling debris. And this is our main character, Shinra, who we learn is the new recruit for this department of the Fire Force. And he has the power of shooting fire out of his feet. Uh, <laughs> guys, thoughts on Shinra? I think he's a pretty good protagonist. Um, he's... Not particularly complicated, but I do like his backstory of, you know, this tragic thing of human combustion happened to him. 
So he wants to prevent people from having to experience this. That's why he's joining this team. Um, I like his power. Uh, it's it's very interesting that, you know, we've got all these characters that can like wield it or control it or, you know, make it come from wherever. But him, it's just right out of his feet. That's the only thing he's got. Well, and uh, what? That, that they do explain like there's there's a second generation who has the ability to control fire and a third generation who has the ability to create fire. <laughs> Right. And uh, his, his quirk of, you know, when my face, when I when I get tense, my face tightens I up. And so I smile uh, yeah. and he's got sharp teeth. So he, yeah. look, you know, even when he's in a very tense situation, he looks like he's smiling like like a devil. So yeah. but um, I, I think he's very shown in protagonist and, you know, he's he fits the story well. Yeah. I absolutely love his combat, the way that they that the way that they draw the fire and the way that he just arcs around and basically break dances on the ground and flies around like a jet. Sometimes he's got his leg like shooting straight up because he's barreling down at the ground, but they don't point him like Iron Man would, where he's like, you know, rigidly going head first towards the ground. Instead it's butt first towards the ground with his foot straight up. I don't know, it's stuff like that, little details that they that they do with him that's really cool. Um also, you know, when I first saw him I thought, is this Bakugo? Because He's got that same look. He's got the teeth, you know, that at least to me elicit that idea of the the more anti-hero, the, the less stable, the more prone to outburst. And and then there were times when you'd see that he actually had pretty good tactical head on his shoulders. And especially when we meet his foil, Arthur, a little bit later um, at, at the beginning, I thought, oh, OK, Arthur is probably going to be more like the, you know, the the laid back cool headed guy that just doesn't like how this guy's always out of control didn't I wasn't right at all <laughs> but um, that really made me think this that that's what he was gonna be and and I kind of got excited for that idea like oh man is this Bakugo's story basically in an alternate universe <laughs> um, but he's uh, I like him he's good he's entertaining but he's absolutely you're right Jason he's he's very predictable very anime trope. He took a little bit to grow on me, but I do like that he's he's not a meathead. Uh, he likes to fight, but it's not like his obsession. He's not a Goku, um, he, and he's not even a Deku. He is definitely kind of his own thing, but he, there's nothing really super unique about him at the same time either. He's just kind of, he's almost very average <laughs> so that he yeah. didn't touch on other Shonen characters. Um I, I like that he has the tragic past, uh, um, and they're linking his past to the overall conspiracy. His powers are definitely fun to watch. His smile is really cool. I like the pointed teeth because that definitely is a, a soul eater. Yeah. Style is having that those pointed teeth. So I, I guess I liked him, but <laughs> not enough that I'll remember his name in a year. I'll be like the feet fire guy. How could you possibly forget Shinra? You're too big uh, of a fan of Final Fantasy VII. You could never forget Shinra. Because uh, I'm not going to link them in my mind. <laughs> but didn't I just link it for you? Come on. <laughs> probably. You probably just made me a liar. Now you're, you're cursed. You'll never forget. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so just uh, to let our audience know we just had some major technical difficulties <laughs> aka Jason did and so <laughs> a little bit of disruption in our flow you can't really tell because of the editing but just so you know we are pushing onward we are at the part <laughs> where the hold main, us down. the main <laughs> character goes to a cathedral slash firehouse that stations the 8th unit of the fire force. And this is where we're going to meet most of our major characters. Uh, the first one we meet is the captain of the 8th precinct. His name is Obi. What did you guys think of Obi? Uh, I thought Obi, Obi was, was really great. cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're done with that then. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, little... A little uh, off our game. Yeah, moment, a little bit. Guys. Now, uh, no, I really like the idea of having a character that doesn't have powers in a world filled with people around them that has powers and how they overcome or decide to become better in that world in spite of it. Um, and not only does he prove himself 
in his training regimen, but also out on the battlefield. But he's so strong that he's able to become the captain of one of these regiments uh, of the Fire Force. And he's he's also not only obviously cares very much for the people under him, but he's also a uh, j- just a decent person that cares for the people around him. And that's uh, outside of the force as well. Yeah, I think it's really cool how they point out that his his power seems to be charisma. Um, <laughs> charisma as well as like just weightlifting. And I love the scenes where he's just <laughs> kind of doing balancing acrobatic stuff, not really moving the weights at all, just kind of trying to stay balanced on a on one of those weight balls and stuff. Look at the core. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's great because one of the characters, Shinra, even calls it out. He's like, you have crossed the line. That is not working out. Like, I don't know what you're doing, but it's not working out. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's a really cool character um, for, for all those reasons. I think, I think it was a little bit after everything that they established with the power levels of these characters and how much of a beating they can take and give out and dish, I find the one of the fights that he's in to be very difficult to to believe that it just it completely broke my immersion as far as like where all the characters stack up when he engaged in a fight and did as well as he did i very very hard to believe i 1000 percent disagree with that <laughs> and, and i'll tell you why because this, this is my favorite character, okay and, and i do love that he has no powers um one thing this anime does is a lot of the characters especially on the main team have are made to be a certain trope. We have the hero slash devil. We have a knight. We have a witch. We have a cat girl. And he's very much like this paladin. You know, he's got this huge shield in front of him. He wears a full deck of armor. He's covered in anti-fire <laughs> grenades. Um, yeah. yeah, he wears, he says like 60 kilograms of gear he wears into battle. Mm-hmm. And as far as his fight with a powerful fire user... I was really into it because he he literally was a firefighter. And I like this idea that getting through fire is just who what I do. <laughs> Your power <laughs> is not impressive to me because that's literally what I defeat on a regular basis. Um, and that I'm because I work out every single day that I can actually stand toe to toe with a fire user. Um, and I, you know, honestly, I'm really you guys remember Vinland Saga. And oh, yeah. And Thorkel said a line in Finland Saga that was, it's fun to watch people fight because you think person A should be able to be person B, but every fight is, is different. It doesn't, there's no, he basically said there's no power levels in, in the real world. And I'm just into that. <laughs> I just like the idea that person A can be person B, but person C can be person A, but it doesn't necessarily determine how B and C will do in a fight. So I'm, I'm, I'm totally down with him showing his stuff. Hmm. Now the the like concrete busting moves that these characters have pulled, where they would like stomp each other through the ground and create shock waves. He Does bounced it... on a ball with a hundred pounds on his head. I'm cool. Okay, with... hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we have we have a scene where we have the weight of a human coming down with the force of a jet hitting yes. someone's face, then taking that face into concrete and it yeah. didn't kill that individual yeah and you're complaining about this <laughs> that's that's what i'm saying is that these guys are not just fire users like sim some other way it's fortifying their body it's it's not just pyrokinetics it's not just pyrokinesis these guys are so ridiculously durable that that is that is kind of a precedent that's established for them they so like a building a ball on him and was like no- this guy had a building fall on him and like shrugged it off. Like, no, no, it's fine. I work out. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, still, it's here's not the big, same as a jet engine. <laughs> here's the big difference between the you two. Troy has seen uh, Bak- uh, Baki or Baki. <laughs> <Yeah>, Baki <laughs> the grappler. That's right. <laughs> what is it? B- Baki the grappler. <laughs> You need it's, to watch uh, it. If you could stomach okay. the violence, Jeremy, you'd love it. it <laughs> okay. It's basically, uh, if you work out enough, you gain superpowers. Oh, God. <laughs> like, like this guy defeats America's army by himself because he could... So what? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Next up, we have Hinoa, the second-in-command lieutenant of the unit 
former military guy, uh, a pyrokinetic who uses guns in his combat. What do you guys think of him? I like his out of combat mess. Um, I think he's, <laughs> I think he's a great character for the squad. I think he's, uh, he's got some great comedic moments when he's obviously not being funny. Um, <laughs> and yep. uh, he's another, another great person that, you know, cares for the people around him. Um, I think his power was frustrating to watch for me because they were talking <laughs> about how second generations can control flame, but I'm not sure how that translates into I can control bullets mid flight. Yeah. But that that's my only complaint about him. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that he's, he's kind of really an offender in that regard is being able to create or being able to manipulate flame doesn't, doesn't to me imply the same thing as being able to create massive, massive force and and energy of like propelling something in a particular direction. That's so hard to believe that like there was a spark so I can create enough of an explosion to completely change the trajectory of a bullet that's flying <laughs> so that it now has the same velocity it had before, but it's going in a direction I want it to go um, like. I don't know that that kind of thing is it's really cool in concept, but oh man, it just takes this anime to uh, the level of ludicrous and ridiculous to me, which I mean, it fits with a lot of the other things they do. This guy is my favorite character, though, because he's the straight man taken beyond the straight man. Like he is he is so serious all the time and he's got like this degree of everything has to be in perfect order. Everything has to, everybody has to behave just right. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of. It's it's kind of a, a a veneer for him because in the background he okay's things here and there that would have broken those rules or did break those rules. Um, so he's kind of playing with it. And the way that they draw his eyes, I can't remember if Sanpaku eyes means that the whole iris is visible or if it means that the top is is hidden. But he's got these crazy eyes that are just so intense all the time, and I love it when the camera just pans to him and just gives you a shot of him just staring at you for like a few seconds <laughs> it's just so great one of my favorite guy. one of my favorite scenes of him was in his backstory where you know it, he's complaining about being this uptight not so nice person and the his friend disagrees with him he's like you you're obviously a very nice person you just bust my my tray he didn't even give it a second thought um, yeah. I thought that was a pretty great scene. And actually, this anime is littered with these kinds of scenes that are pretty great. Like, yeah. small detail um, character building. I do think the anime really limited itself by saying all the characters that have powers are pyrokinetics. It's <laughs> Because usually when you have pyrokinetics, there's also telepaths and telekinetics. There's all kinds of different mental powers mm -hmm. in play to make everything... Cause, and, and they obviously want to be as creative as any other anime doing powers. Mm -hmm. Like like my, Hero, like my Hero Academia literally comes up with the most random stuff. And they just say, it's a yeah. world of random powers. These are like, hey, all our powers fit in this one rule. But then we still want to be creative. And I feel like Hinawa's uh, power set suffered from that. Because I, lo I love the idea of a guy using guns, but he's like bending the book. He's shooting uh -oh. around corners. Oh, you just skipped for a moment. You're still here. Okay. <laughs> I love the idea of him bending the bullets and shooting around <clears throat> corners and lowering the impact so that it's used as more of a uh, a knockout weapon when he's shooting people. Uh, but, again, it doesn't fit into any scientific explanation they try to give. And so I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, okay, this is an anime that doesn't care. <laughs> and yeah. that's fine. Or, or we really want one of our girls to be a cat girl. Let's give her flame tail and flame ears. Yeah, yeah. But yep. pink flame. Yes. Okay. Like lightning wow. flame or something. I right? still don't know what she does with her powers besides look like a cat. She sends them out so that they can be frozen. That's, that's about it. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, I was still talking, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh. I like I like Hina was that that he was like the wise old man of the group. Like, mm. yeah, even Obi is like, oh man, how are we going to get these kids in line? And he's like, it's fine. Like, hey, it's nice that we have 
a family started here kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I really liked them. Okay, uh, the next up is the witch of the group, Maki. She um, is also from the military, but is too kind-hearted to really be a combatant. Super strong and physically tough and kind of hates the fact that she's all muscly and ripped. Uh, her power is to control flame, and she literally turns it into little living fire creatures that yeah. the rest of the fire force then murders immediately. Because... <laughs> I love that. It's so good. She cries every time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thoughts on Maki? I really like this character. Um, I I like the as far as anime tropes go, she kind of departs from the shonen like role of muscly teammate, right? Um, she's not, you know, she's on. <laughs> I love it when they try and call her a gorilla or something because she's just oh, yeah. not only looks more like it, but then gets offended. Um, oh. But I, I like that she's the strong, dependable teammate that has a power that has nothing to do with her muscles and also is very kind hearted and sweet. Um, and also she's got some great comedic lines as well. So, uh, but she's kind of the backbone of the team really. Yeah. I think adorable is, is probably the word I would pick for her. She's (laughs) because she's, she is so innocent and so kind hearted. Um, but I do think that, I would have designed her hairstyle a little differently because when they introduced the second uh, pyrokinetic fighter, uh, she has it. Yeah. Fan service girl. (laughs) Their hairstyles are so similar that it was, I don't know. It's just missed opportunity in my mind, but yeah, um, she's really cool. I like her. Uh, I like how they first introduced her. Like she's the toughest part of the group, but she's also like the romantic She's the one, and uh, it does seem She's like sugar Shin- for brains. It seems like Shinra has a bit of a crush on her. He seems to yeah. care a little bit more about what's going on with her, uh, and uh, her flame things are adorable. She doesn't seem super effective in combat yet, though. Well, uh, I she's think more it's... offensive. Yeah, right? yeah, because we saw her in that first one where she was like, "I'm the meat shield," and leaping in the way. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, also, I ship it. She's Johanna. <laughs> And then we also have who I thought they were just going to name sister for the first couple of episodes, but her name yeah. is Iris. Uh, she is the nun of the group who helps pray and send the souls away. Which uh, isn't actually a thing. She's just doing it so that they can all feel good about putting them Right, to because rest. the Fire Force is affiliated with the church, and yeah. that is part of the service but that they, they don't... perform. It, they don't all have nurse. Uh, they don't all have sisters that do this. At least that's the impression I get. Is that not all of them say prayers when they put them to rest? Mm. That seems to be a thing that eight does, which means that she just tags along to be there. And I'm like, oh. so it depends on which faction they most represent. Because we find right. out that you know you've got the techno corporation right. guys, One, you've got the government guys. The first group seems very religious, and they seem to yeah, pray yeah. themselves when they. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they, if if they're affiliated with the church more than the corporation or the government, then yeah, they they usually will do the prayer. And they're also much more stringent on uh, religious practice within what they do. Yeah, and there there were nuns at the first group because they were outside the window. Yeah, until that's a true. Couple morning, so they do have. I don't know if they take them with them. Um, thoughts on Iris, the character, though, the other fan service. <laughs> oh, totally. Mm, she. She's, She's I like okay. that she, yeah, I like that she has this story that they actually did spend a little time in the outro with. They spent too much time, as we mentioned already, um, just because we have to see it every time. And it really has only played into that one part. I'm guessing it's probably going to tie back into the story a little bit later as more of a fundamental beat. But um, she's she's basically just there to be the quiet, shy, nice girl i guess i don't know she's kind of boring to me she felt very plot device uh, to an excuse to get another plot device shoehorned into the story yeah i mean that might be an unfair assessment but that's kind of how it felt yeah she's um she's shown bathing a lot that's for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, she is i guess it uh i had some thoughts about the plot 
or the fan service, and I have no issue with fan service. Actually, what what I usually mind is like um, a pervert character who's trying to create fan service or exploiting fan service. Uh, that, yeah, you don't like little purple haired guy in my <laughs> right, academia. But that, uh, that uh, <laughs> bugs the heck out of me. But I actually enjoy fan service as much as the next guy, and I, I don't mind it at all when it's you know reversed for the the opposite sex. So um, no complaints for me here. And this, like I said, coming from Soul Eater, very much in line with the same oh, yeah. kind of stuff they were going for I, there. I, I like fan service. <laughs> I like fan service too, but I don't like it when it feels contrived. And I think one of the characters that we'll get to, uh, it, she just irritates the absolute snot on me. But oh, how could you? Be? It, she has a power. It's called Lucky Letcher Lure. That's not contrived at all. <laughs> With that power, you can do anything you want, and it won't be contrived. All right, all right. Going back to the story, um, after everyone <laughs> is basically introduced, they get to get called for their first mission. We do learn about Shinra's like his smile and a little bit of his backstory. Basically, his mother and brother died in an infernal attack. No, but, mom turned into an infer- infernal. Is that what they said? Because I thought it yeah. wasn't his mom. Okay, but his mom was the. He infernal. said there was a third thing there, but. We also see pictures of his mom starting to light on fire. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's and, mom. The, yeah. And brother, we find out this didn't happen, but brother burned so hot that there was no bones left. And it's like, okay, well, the brother's different. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly go, what I thought. While he's dealing with these memories and we're getting his backstory, they go on this mission to um, kill basically a, a factory worker who has become an infernal. They talk to her husband and. Who, basically we learned this it's not just about like going to fight a monster you're going to put a person to rest who's suffering because they're literally still feeling the fire burning themselves but they're also kind of becoming evil and you're trying to comfort their loved ones and the eighth takes that very seriously where in other groups and divisions don't it's more about like hey let's just go kill monsters uh these guys are like we are helping people we are putting people to rest we take this very seriously and we'll get more into that in the next episode um Basically, we get to see everyone's powers a little bit, but really, Shinra does the big final attack that that kills this uh, this uh, infernal. What I didn't like is that he he like poses on the ground and like fires his feet for like a minute uh, for like revving up to start, and then goes up and changes direction, killing all momentum he had built up yeah. with that yeah. that start. And I'm like, okay, well, you really didn't need to do it that way. You could have <laughs> just gone and had the same. All right, it's fine. It looked cool. The, the fire looked cool. Yeah, that's actually important. this. And this particular infernal, like, uh, was seemed really strong and really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and he was he almost did kind of wuss out. But his whole thing is everyone called him a devil because of his grin and his wicked teeth and the fact his family burned to death. And he promised his mommy be a superhero. He takes that very seriously. And I know in our pre-show, Jeremy, you kind of said, like, are they trying to do something with My Hero Academia here or compete with them? And I did kind of feel that. But I also, in a world where there aren't superheroes or even the the Fire Force or kind of evil, I like the idea of a character who's like, I'm going to be a superhero. And he uses his powers to to pose like one and to come flying into the rescue. Um, I, I appreciated that. In the next episode, we meet the second new recruit that the Eighth gets. His name is Arthur. He went to the Academy with Shinra. They don't like each other. Um, He is a knight, but then when Shinra told him he was a hero and heroes are better than knights, he decided he was a king knight, (laughs) and that's the kind of relationship they have. It's very childish. It's so competitive that when they sit down to eat, they're always glaring at each other to see who can eat fastest. (laughs) Well, and then they get yelled at for eating fast, so they see who can chew the most, <laughs> the <Yeah>. longest. <laughs> um, his power, basically, is, is he's also a third generation, so he can only create flame. He can't control it, so he has a sword handle that he shoots uh, his flame through, and it turns it into a plasma. He basically has a plasma sword. A lightsaber. He has a lightsaber. Um, yeah. and... <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yep. And so your guys' thoughts on Arthur, who is kind of the meathead of the group, where instead of the main character being it. He kind of irritates the snot out of me, honestly. Um, <laughs> he's... And so when we first meet him, and like up until a particular point, 
he's fine. Um, he, you know, he's the shonen uh, rival, and he plays that part well. Um, it, but he's also pretty dumb. But he's so dumb, he forgot which hand he needed to fight with. Yes. Switches hands, and <laughs> now is powerful. And that just yeah. absolutely, my my eyes almost <laughs> fell out of my head. They rolled so hard. I was so upset. <laughs> oh, I loved that. I love that. But yeah. But besides that, he's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, he's he, he definitely plays the dumb blonde. Yeah, he plays it well. There's moments where I suspect that he may not be as dumb as he seems. Like, we get a scene where he's basically supposed to be looking for somebody, and he's just kind of wandering through the desert. And he's got this look on his face like he's going somewhere with a purpose. And then it's just dropped. What did he do? No, in the was next episode, just ep lost. Yeah, in the next episode, they say, "Are you gonna get lost again?" <laughs> so he, he was just lost out he of just the desert. Wandered into a desert. <laughs> like, God. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I I find him to be a really funny foil for Shinra, and I also really enjoy those moments where Shinra will meet somebody who who speaks in a really dumb way or is really dumb and says dumb things. And there is a distinction between those two things. Like, you can be intelligent and yet put things together in a stupid way intentionally, which one of the characters we encounter does that. And you can also be somebody who thinks you're smart and you're an absolute idiot and everything you say is stupid. And what's so funny is that Shinra will encounter people like this with Arthur at his side. And Shinra is like the audience commentary of, oh, my God, this is so stupid. I can't believe this is happening. And then Arthur is like, he gets mad about it or something because he doesn't get that it's stupid like he is on the same wavelength as these people and so whatever they're trying to do if it's trying to like poke him or something it works perfectly um so i, I love those moments but yeah he's he's silly but he's also a little bit like he has fond moments where you see him do things that are really nice like reaching out to shinra or helping him or something i i it i think it's interesting because they do kind of set him up as the rival and then quickly show that he's so dumb that he's not <laughs> and yeah. then he also like so he's honestly a best friend that they have a friendship with but he's not like pushing Shinra to be more powerful like mm -hmm. a Sasuke Naruto relationship um and honestly he's so dumb that it's kind of fun to see him suffer because of it and so I did enjoy it. the there there's a scene at the end where they're all doing paperwork and like he's <laughs> about to become a ghost like he's drawn all white and and, and yeah. Shinra's and they're like we should take a break and Shinra's like no he's about to die this is awesome let's <laughs> yeah. not stop and I found that funny and I was like I'm okay yep. with that because that guy was just wandering the desert for no <laughs> reason and then and then food's ready and then he goes from white ghost to oh time to go <laughs> yep <laughs> uh, they. They get into a bit of a... They're about to fight each other, and then uh, Hinoa's like, nope, you guys are going to fight Maki for training. And then she kicks the crap out of both of them. Uh, then they go on a mission together, and this is one where a husband has turned into an infernal. He's literally sitting at his kitchen table waiting for this to happen. And um, Shinra and Arthur both get in trouble for having weapons they're holding in front of the victim's family. And Obi pulls them aside and is like, "That's their, that's her husband, and you're holding a weapon. Father. You're going to kill him with, yeah, father." Yeah. yeah. And um, she had lost her mom to being infernal as well, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and they say like, he, he he told them before they got there, put it away. He's like, "We don't show weapons. We are here to be compassionate." Um, at the same time, like a, a face appears in the sky made out of fire. Uh, yeah. One of the villains is getting involved in the situation and kind of scouting them. Uh, but they go in, and Arthur does the the blow to the Infernal, who who sits there and waits for it to happen, uh, as kind of a way of repenting, and you know because he feels bad. And then th there's a really great scene at the end of this episode where Arthur and Shinra are lying in bed, and they're kind of teasing each other about not being able to fall asleep, but you can tell they're both super unsettled and kind of realizing what they are actually doing, and mm -hmm. and comforting each other at the same time, and it, um. Jeremy, you had mentioned in pre-show how well done it was and how not, yeah. little moments like this are really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, then we go into <coughs> the next arc, basically. Um, the rookie games happen. 
This is where all the rookies compete in an obstacle course to save pretend victims in a burning fire, and then Shinra blasts right to the top. Um, <laughs> but before that, we do meet a few characters. So one is the villain from the last scene. His name is Joker. He wears a scarf over one eye, and he's talking to another villain who we don't get a name for. He, man, he looks like a familiar anime character to me, but I couldn't quite place who it was. Maybe the protagonist from Catherine, the video game, which is kind of anime. Um, hmm. But we never really to hear... mention W. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what's really interesting is there's this isn't the only group of villains in this. There seems to be multiple groups of, of villains, and this seems to be one that's that's separate. Um, but the guy we meet is Joker. So thoughts on him, and maybe a little bit the other guy. Um, his persona is not very. Good. Oh wait, wrong. Um... <sighs> Uh, I think he's uh, he's a decent shonen villain, but definitely a shonen villain. Um, the I'm going to test you, but then I'm going to divulge some information to you because I want you to do my thing. That I'm it, it's it's very obtuse and unnecessarily so, but uh, because we have no idea what his motivation is at the moment, because we have some other villains that we have a very clear motivation of what they're doing. Uh, this guy, like, sure, he's done some villainous things, but we have no idea whose side he on, he's on, what he's doing, or what his goals are. Um, and so it's a little frustrating, but we only see him a couple times, so. It, there's, I think he suffers because of a choice that they made in how they treat all their villains. All their villains are crazy. Um, even the ones that aren't really villains, they're, they're going to turn out to be good guys. Like any time that we run into a situation where there's some antagonist, that antagonist is always over the top crazy. Um, we see it with the captain of, of squad five. We see it with the fight with Rekka later. We see it with, um, well, obviously all of the infernals are pretty much lost their minds with a handful of a few. I mean, one of them is a serial killer. So like, everybody's nuts over the top. And I think that I think that he suffers for that because his level of craziness, if it was a peak rather than just, you know, a slight arc amidst so many other arcs, <laughs> as far as pacing goes for a character behavior, I think it would have made him really interesting, more memorable. But yeah, he's it's it's almost just a little bit too annoying having having too many characters like this. I, I kind of don't even care about him, to be honest. I'm kind of in your boat. Yeah, I, I, I agree with both of you said. It, it is kind of hard to know, do I hate him or not? He hasn't really done anything that despicable yet, except for just kind of be mildly annoying and, yeah. and taunting. Um, he does kind of add to the mystery of the conspiracy. And one thing I think the anime does well, especially for a shonen, is have a conspiracy that I'm invested in. I do mm-hmm. like the layers they're building in their their mystery, whereas most shonen, I'm like, ah, it'll probably be 300 episodes before I figure <laughs> out where this was going. Yeah. Um, and, and this feels like, oh, there's like a purpose to this. And then I'm like, but this is a shonen, so there probably isn't. <laughs> but I want to believe there is, that, that you're heading in a very specific direction towards a very specific answer for us. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, and then we also meet from the first division, Tomoki, who will eventually join <laughs> our heroes. This is a character that we've already mentioned a couple of times. Uh, the fan service girl, the cat girl, drives yep. Jason crazy girl. <laughs> uh, she has, she's a, she creates fire, but it shows up in the shape of a tail and two ears, and then she can extend it. And in the intro, it shows her, like, absorbing or yeah. killing infernals like they disappear when she touches them. So mm-hmm. I've been waiting for an explanation on her powers, but we haven't really got one yet. But she also seems to get like cat powers when she does it too. She runs on all fours and. <laughs> yes. Okay, so thoughts thoughts on th- 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 seems her seems her only superpower is doing inappropriate things with Shinra, uh, <laughs> accidentally, like like she literally turns around and all of a sudden you know he's inside her clothes and it's like I, yeah. th- th- this is this is the most frustrating thing to watch oh like, man. like this is th- this is straight up assault that you could be arrested for 
But except that she oh, did it. Right. That's the thing. Shinra didn't do it. She anything. didn't do it. Well, she did. Right. It. But I'm going like how how do you explain that to a, a an officer if she were to call the cops? Like, <laughs> no, 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 you don't yeah. understand. She ran yeah. into me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But besides that, uh, she's very dumb. <laughs> like, I I just I don't like this character at all. I find her to be funny. I thought that they spent a huge amount of their animation budget on her cry face, which was like okay. That I had almost looked rotoscoped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I understand why why you're doing this and everything, and and this is like this is a really big moment for this character, but at the same time, she really is just fan service like that is her sole purpose and so <laughs> so having those moments where they try to give her a little bit more depth almost kind of i don't know it clashes with that for me where it's like yeah, she's no it's the wrong character to do that with i don't know um but i i think one of the funniest things for me is that when she has to extend her tail uh there's the particular scene where she does this and she's got it looked like she had two one coming off of each hip or something maybe i'm not sure but i thought for sure she'd just like you know extend it facing forward but no when they told her to extend the tail she literally turns around puts her butt up in the air and shoots the tail off of her backside <laughs> it's just this character cracks me up so bad like she's like you said jason she's a complete idiot and and it's just it's to me that's really funny like I don't know, I, I have a soft spot for these dumb characters. I I found some of her scenes humorous and some's not. The the one when she ends up in an apron, I I laughed at. Yeah, you're supposed to put it over your clothes. Why are you naked underneath? Um, yeah. However, I don't like her. But I'm gonna That's say so yet. I don't like her yet. I feel like she needs some more. She needs to be Man making service. some more choices. Um, <laughs> Like, she didn't choose to come to the 8th. And I think it would have been a really big thing for her to be like, hey, I want to transfer over to the 8th um, after, you know, I've had a change of heart or, or after this yeah. big moment. Instead, they're like, no, we're going to punish you and make you join the main cast. She doesn't seem to be making any choices for herself or have any... There's a word for it. I'm completely drawn a blank. Agency? Something. Yes, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, just... She needs to be more of a character rather than just fan service. And I feel like if, if I we get a better explanation of her powers and see her making choices for herself. And, and like maybe one good battle with her where she's the fighter and she comes out on top. Like we had, we see for all the other characters. I think that would be enough for me and I'd be fine with her as a character, but we haven't got that yet. She's just kind of like this little sister with a lot of fan service that's tagging along. And it's just kind of like have a point or get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Like when you've got these town folks asking her to strip again, it's like, okay, Oh, that was this funny. Is, this is getting out of hand. Like, <laughs> at least she didn't say yes. <laughs> no, she said no. Exactly. No, I thought it was funny. I, I get the joke. It's it's a funny joke. You know, um, Japan is the world's leading porn producer, so it makes sense. Hmm. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> My wife told me that fact. It's not something I know myself. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was just asking Honest. for a friend. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Uh, so they do this training session, and like I said, Shinra just flies up to the top where Joker meets him, and he's taken two of the trainees uh, hostage, and they have a bit of a fight where basically Joker just taunts him with information and especially tells him that, hey, your brother is alive and the Fire Force isn't the good guys you think they are. Um, surprise, Arthur, surprise. Arthur and Tomoki show up, and they end up beating back Joker, but he causes the building to collapse. So they have to fly out of the roof and then everyone gets saved um, in time. It's just got this weird powder that he can control ish. It's ash made from infernals. Infernals, right. No, I got that. But then I think his power is to explode. I think his power is to control ash, because doesn't he take the smoke yeah. from the cigarettes and do stuff with it? Isn't that his whole But but it's not on fire. That pyrokinetics Never mind. It's not yep. worth it. Not worth it. Yep. Not worth it. Yeah. Uh, after that, like how sometimes your your body heat that's not really fire either, or the heat of a bullet. Never mind. Yeah. I, I gotta stop. <laughs> anyway, um, 
Shinra talks to Obi about what happened, and Obi admits that uh, Section 8 of the Fire Force has a very different mission than everybody else, that all the other missions are splintered based on who funds them. There's the church group, there's the military group, and then there's company groups. And every nobody works together, and they're supposed to be solving the mystery of these Infernals, but they're not sharing information, and some seem to be wanting to keep it a secret. So the 8th is special secret mission. The reason they exist is to investigate all the other seven and find out what's going on. <clears throat> I can't remember and who's Shinra's funding like, them. Do we know? No. He uh, Obi reports to someone, and mm-hmm. he but he's never revealed, like, because he said he was going to start his own, but we don't know how he ended up doing that. Mm-hmm. And Shinra's totally into it. He's like, yep, that serves my needs, and we're the good guys, so I'm cool. Yep. Um, then <laughs> in the next episode, uh, Shinra and Arthur have to go save a dog from a tree, but it's not a dog in a tree. It's an old man who looks like a dog in a tree uh, because there's these three mascots in this one, world. one, nine, <laughs> one, one, nine. Um, and there was going to be two dogs and a cat, but then they decided that's too many dogs. So they drew the dog character as an old man. So he looks like a, a dog, but he's an old man. And these characters apparently just hang out on the roof of eight's building yeah and, sometimes and, when they're not and, giving out balloons and they're sometimes yep. hung out to dry on, on clotheslines yeah <laughs> they're basically just a recurring joke that if you tra- start thinking about it, it doesn't make any sense but they're they're the silly cartooniness side of this anime and i'm wondering if they're actually setting us up for some surprising role that these particular characters oh God, have I hope to play. they are yeah. the masterminds behind this whole yeah. thing that would be yeah. the worst. <laughs> I'm really suspicious that there's something like that going on. Okay. <laughs> they're to spy on them. Uh, when yeah. they're talking to them, though, they mention, hey, yeah, there's a fireman. And actually, now, there is a difference between firemen and fire force. Fire force kill infernals. Firemen actually just fight fires. Uh, there's a fireman who has been committing murders. He's on trial today. And he gets not guilty. And then as soon as that happens, he becomes an infernal. Um, but not only does he become an infernal, he's an infernal who keeps his conscious mind, which is very, very, very rare. Uh, Section 8 is called in to handle it. Shinra and Arthur have to fly there, and they actually go ahead of the rest of the group and start fighting him. He surrenders. He's like, oh, okay, you guys caught me. I don't want to die, so I surrender. And they're like, no, we kill infernals. So he runs away, and Shinra has to, you know, has a big battle with him in the street. And then again, he surrenders, and he's like, okay, but can we wait till the sister prays for me? I don't want to die without the prayer. And Shinra's like, all right. And then he does a sneak attack. But at that time, the 5th re- Regiment Squad, <laughs> section, whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Section 5 shows up, uh, and they are led by Princess Hibana, who is Princess a former... Huba- uh, what? Princess Hibana. <laughs> uh, Hibana is a former nun who used to work with, or used to live with Iris, and then everyone in the um, orphanage uh, was murdered. <laughs> so now, <laughs> and now she uh, is a a fire captain, and she studies infernals, and so she wants to capture this one. She looks at Shinra, and he collapses because she has the ability to hit you with a heat wave, which overheats your body. With a look, but also can make flowers. Out of fire. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Thoughts on Princess Habana? Another character where their power set makes literally no sense in the context of I can control flame. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and also, this is the first, like, really blatant instance of I'm going to beat you into being my friend. Yep. Um, didn't like it. But I like that. I, I liked her as a villain because I thought yeah. she did well as a shonen villain of someone who's crazy, who's taken advantage of a system to get what she wants by, you know, uh, using her wiles, using her powers, using her status. Um, and then that was all undermined. Uh, in reality, she deserved at least to be locked up, if not sent the way of the Infernals. But that's just my personal opinion. But besides that, she's an interesting character. And I actually look forward to seeing more of how she helps into it. Because she's more of a researcher as well. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think it's because they took her to such an extreme of of craziness and villainous behavior that to have her flip so hard and do a 180 so quickly with just that one battle scene, uh, it, it's it, a little bit difficult for me to believe that the character actually you know, really changed who she was. But at the same time, she's still not a good person. Yeah. And and I was going to say that that there's still moments where you can still tell that she's got, you know, residue of, of the former her. She hasn't completely changed, but I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel right. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but it just, something's not right there. But, um, I do love some of the scenes that because of her changing and because of her particular weakness for Shinra now, as she's so fond of him, I love some of the things that that creates. I think probably my favorite is in the last episode where um, she's kind of in charge of Section 8 because everybody else is somewhere else. And um, and so she's telling her men to like set up a desk over there for Shinra, and she's moving all of the Captain Obi's stuff. Just put it outside. I don't care. We don't we don't care where his stuff is. We just want to set this up because this is all gonna be Shinra's now. <laughs> this is really funny. Hated the flip. Totally yeah. predictable because you know Shonen's gonna Shonen. Yep. Uh, but even in shown in form, it's not done well. It's literally like a punch to the head and okay, I'm a good guy now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I didn't really like her as a villain. I thought she was over the top and kind of extra. I actually liked her as an ally. She made much more sense then. And even her explanation for being evil, I was fine with because she was like, I was always trying to do good, but I figured the world's so darn evil, I'll just keep being, I'll do evil. And, you know, because she wanted to get to the truth, too. That was her goal. And she's like, yeah, but it did, I just figured torturing people would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, 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 like Jeremy said, I really like the scenes of how much she's in love with Shinra and all the little things she does yeah. that just drive Captain Obi insane. <laughs> like, she fills his locker with stuff. So that <laughs> and says, like, you need to treat Shinra better. <laughs> and he goes to Shinra. Ways. And was like, yeah, but I like my lunch. He's like, I'll buy you ramen if you just tell her to get out. <laughs> and she just hangs out at their their um, cathedral all the time now instead of going to her own. They're like, don't you work at five? She's like, yeah, but I like being here for reasons. <laughs> uh, yep. So that that's my thoughts on her. Um, she just seemed like a much more palatable character once she was no longer a villain. Uh so, uh, the two companies come together at this around this uh, burning guy who could talk now, and basically Obi says, "Fine, you can take him. It's fine." And they talk some smack about Obi, and then Mika does a or Maki does a sucker punch on the guy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they go their separate ways. But Obi decides, "Okay, we're going to investigate the fifth now." And at the same time, Iris decides on her own to go talk to H- Hibana and figure out what's going on. You know, we're former friends. Why are you being so evil? What's going on with this? And when she gets there, immediately gets her clothes burned off. I know. <laughs> See, again, I'm like, why, as a villain, is that even important for you to do? Why is that your move? Right. That's so yeah. stupid. Yeah, um, they, they they tried to justify it with like the story of, you know, God isn't real. And yes. why are you wearing that stupid habit? And I'm going to burn the habit off. But at the same time, I totally agree with you. Tanya was watching. We, she watched up to episode nine and then she's like, that's it. I'm done. I'm so this is. Yeah, no, nope, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and at this moment, we both looked at each other and I had a big grin on my face. And I'm like, you knew that was coming. <laughs> and she goes, yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, we also can't forget about the scene where Shinra finds Iris bathing slash crying. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you always do those two yeah, things together. <laughs> super awkward. <laughs> um, uh, company, they, they train in combat. Yeah, she goes to the thing. <laughs> then Shinra goes there as well, and the rest of the company eight sneaks inside. So basically, it's a big fight between eight and five. And uh, Maki and Hinoa fight. Uh, the, the guy who could blow bubble gum full of gasoline. That's make great it power. Yep. <laughs> hey, it's Mineta, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> and then exploding head balls. <laughs> there's also like this group, like the the something three. They're the three identical people oh, that we find out there's, three. there's actually six of them, mm-hmm. and they're not yeah. even identical. Nine. Like what? Oh, there's yeah, nine, nine of them nine total. Of them. Yeah, yeah. But like some dye their hair and some are wearing wigs. <laughs> yep. There might even uh, be more because he encounters three more inside the building. Jeez. Like Twelve of them. They defeat them, and then Arthur fights uh, the Infernal and this old man scientist who has branded him as the fifth uh, uh, Fire Force cut. And this is the scene where he's like, oh, "Something's wrong. I'm just not as powerful as I used to be." Oh yeah, I'm right-handed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he beats yes. him easily. Um, I laughed so out loud. I laughed out loud at how stupid that was. It was just, I don't know, it was it fit so well with the stupidity of so many other things in this anime. <laughs> Shinra then goes inside and uh, faces off against Habana. And, and we, she explains her, like, all her power. And then at first, like, I can look at you and make you overheat. Okay, but now my other power is I make plants out of fire right. and look there's a tree dropping cherry blossoms but the cherry blossoms burn you when they drop on you they're not dropping on me or iris they're only mm-hmm. dropping on you even though they're everywhere mm-hmm. um we get her backstory which was you know the the nunnery burned down and she decided that she didn't want to ever be powerless again yada 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 mm-hmm. uh, shinra does shonen hero stuff I, i'm never gonna give up i'm always gonna keep fighting I, i'm a hero again i did like his superhero name, which was Smack That Princess to Her Senses Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he basically launches an attack and he punches her in the head, which sends her into another Shonen flashback. And then when she comes back, they're <laughs> standing around her and he's like, Hey, if you ever need help, I'll be your hero. And she's like, Okay, well, I love you and I'll be a good guy. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> this was never horrible. never going to give up. He's never yeah. gonna let her down. Yep. <laughs> never gonna run oh, around. God. But it gets better. <laughs> she needs a hero. Them, it gets better. The three of them go outside and they're like, okay, so how do we explain this? And oh, Iris God. is like, what if we have a dinner party? And they're like, Yep. <laughs> That'll <laughs> fix everything. <laughs> and they pretend this was all a joint exercise. And they oh. actually do have like a, a yeah. cookout yeah. where they all become friends. Oh my god. It, Where we learned the, the Angels 3 are not all triplets. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, exactly. The levels of absurdity are just so high at this point that it's hard to take anything seriously, and yet the anime still tries to play up melodrama. Oh, it's so hard. I I really also like the scene of Obi getting ready. He puts on all his gear, and then he gets a call. He's like, wait, it's over? That was oh. awesome. Yes. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I hated about the fight, uh, just to touch on that, is that she's because he's getting hit with a heat wave. He's like, "Oh, I, I'm giving you vertigo." He's like, "Well, vertigo is only an illusion." I'm like, "No, that's real, man. Yeah. That's like your blood vessels doing stuff. That's not in. That's yeah. not imaginary. She's not hitting exactly. you with illusions. You're you're suffering from an ailment." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You literally are not having as much blood in your brain. You're going to pass out. It's gonna <laughs> happen. Right, but this is a shonen, so he needs to, you know, go beyond. Yeah. Plus Ultra. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Feels dirty. Um, the next the next arc has has now started, uh, along with that cookout. Um, also the the first division is basically the next group that needs to be investigated, and it seems they're aware of of. Obi's intentions or plan because because mm-hmm. Captain Burns is like oh Obi's made his move but then when Obi's like hey I want to send my rookies over there for you know training <laughs> he's like all right bring them over um which is the plan they're going to send because uh, Habana basically says hey we found out that these infernals are being created artificially there are real infernals, but someone is also making them, and they do seem to be coming from the first section's territory. So they use the rookie reassignment plan and send Shinra and Arthur there as spies. Along with like a bunch of other sections, rookies as cover. Yeah. Um, 
this this is when I really started getting the fe- bleach feels, um, especially later once they go into the the, the land of the dead, um, where you, like there's all these captains and they have all these lieutenants and seconds and and soldiers in their groups, and it's almost like their own cast, uh, <laughs> and, and it's very much how this feels in Fire Force. So uh, we'll talk about the first is characters that are important. First, we off is Captain Burns, wears an eye patch which can combust. Um, and his skin is so tough, you cannot cut it with a plasma sword. What do you think of Captain Burns, who might be a villain? I don't know anything about this character. Like, he's powerful, he's a leader. That's about it. Like, it, I don't even know how his power works, because he's just standing there, and all of a sudden, it's the whole, like, you know, the you've got the shinobi that puts their hand on their sword, and you think you see him twitch, and then, like, 27 different things are cut. It's like, okay, yeah. great, but can we get some sort of explanation? And no. Anime's like, nope. Uh, but I'd, he, he's I'd okay. It's even worse than that, because he, like, he stomps the ground, literally, and then all of a sudden, Shinra just flies backward, like, some incredible force just hit him in the face. Yeah, it's... Ugh. All right, so good guy or bad guy? What are you guys' guess? Yes. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a good guy, too. Based on Bleach, because there's a lot of guys who are <laughs> like, oh, the captains of the Soul Society are, you know, they're villains. And it's like, oh, no, most of them are actually good guys. There was only, really only like one villain hidden among them. And they just all seemed like they were in on the conspiracy, but they really weren't. And that's what it feels like with Captain Burns to me. So also another thing is this guy sets the uh, the scale. Because he's captain, but he's not the most powerful captain. <laughs> and he can stop a plasma sword with his forearm. <laughs> or even grab it with his fingers. Well, and, and yet dissipated he it. Yeah, well, he, yeah, and dissipated, even though he's not a second generation, he's a third generation. So he doesn't have the power to extinguish fire at all. He only has the power to make fire. He doesn't have the power to control fire. But... Somehow he can do all that and stomp and knock you. I don't know. This, yeah, don't you know. know where I'm going with that. <laughs> all right. Uh, another character we meet is one of his lieutenants whose name is Rekka. He says, Oh, my stars, all the time. He has stars <laughs> in his eyes and he has the ability to turn his arms on fire. So he's like the opposite of Shinra, who yeah. has fire feet. This guy has fire arms. What do you think of? And we're going to find out he's our, he's our villain of the arc. So what do you think of yeah. him? Oh. Um. He was irritating. Okay. Yeah. Fair point. He was, yeah. Yeah. He was just another crazy character. And coming off of five, I was wondering, are they going to change his mind? Oh, wait. No, he's crazier. Oh. Oh, he's he's like really nuts. Okay. He's lost it. He's not going to be converted. You know, but I, I don't know. At the beginning, he kind of came across as reasonably you know, interesting because he was saying, you know, I'm, I want to fight you. Absolutely. I'm going to, I want to join in and train the rookies and leaping around, dodging things and praising the guy. But then later when you understand his perspective, it kind of makes sense where it's like, Oh, he's, he's literally just looking for someone that's going to be really powerful with fire for other reasons. I see. <laughs> um, okay. And then thoughts on Kareem, who is another Lieutenant and, his power is he sucks up fire into his instrument and then freezes it. Oh, are you guys okay? I, I think I just gave you no. both aneurysms. <laughs> I, just... like, I don't want to okay. talk about this guy. <laughs> um, like, it's very similar to the principle of like a air conditioning unit or a refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there's a third medium. Like, you have to have some sort of transfer medium for this to work. You just... Well, I mean, you can in anime, because you just hand wave it away. But you you can't just transfer energy from one source to another. It's got to have some sort of transformative medium to do it. Um, And I'm getting way too technical for an (laughs) anime. Uh, But, yeah, watching his ability was one of the most frustrating things. (laughs) Yeah. What do you think of the character? <laughs> uh, I thought he was overly obtuse. Um, I, I did find his his opening funny. I did find the 
you know, everyone starts getting offended at him, like saying ass. And then it's yeah. like, oh, wait, he was just saying that your ass wasn't indeed an ass. He wasn't calling <laughs> you or like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's overly obtuse for no reason. And I just didn't I didn't like the character. Yeah, he was he was obtuse while obtusing the obtuse as an obtuse man obtusing. Like, that's the kind of thing he does in all of his conversations in the sub. He just that's what he does just constantly mm -hmm. constantly. And it's Doesn't so annoying. Too. Yeah, it's so annoying. And this was one of the things I was referring to with uh, R where it was a really funny moment because it's just this really stupid wordplay thing where he didn't say anything at all. But that confused Arthur and made him mad. <laughs> and that made me laugh. Um, but it would be very easy to explain this guy's power if all they did is say, you know, the lack of heat makes ice. You can condense moisture in the air and freeze it if you remove the heat. And so he's using his fire to create a vacuum, you know, or something like that. But no, they, they didn't do that. They decided that they needed to have instruments. And that would because be because it's given. shonen. Because it's shonen and he needs a bell. Because, oh God, a bell. A bell isn't even a wind instrument. It's even weirder. Um, but, but yeah, uh, he transferred it from the bell to his instrument because that's where the Why? expenditure of yeah. Why? Never mind. Can we move on from this character? Can yeah. I talk about so, him? Or... Yes. His personality well, no. was was <laughs> interesting, and I I actually found him to be the most convincing one to change sides. Not really change sides, but to actively join eight in their investigation. I liked him. <laughs> I, I like the I like the the dynamic between him and Rekka of the the super nice super friendly guy is the yeah. evil one and the jerk butthead is actually the honorable to trying to do the right thing and I like that there was a guy who was like yeah I'm also trying to bring this down but that doesn't mean I'm on your I was just because I'm not on the eight doesn't mean there aren't people out there who are good and trying to do right um, and I like that the only thing that was weird was like how did Captain Burns feel about everything that goes on in this arc. Because we never find out. Yeah, we never find out. Which is odd. But yeah, I like him. Naruto. No. I have no <laughs> problems with his powers because none of this anime works if you have problems with the powers. You just have to accept that it's not, it doesn't make I, sense. I'm okay with the power not making sense. Don't try to explain it and give yeah. me a structure for it if you're going to just then disregard. What he just tubas said. the fire into ice. How is that right? <laughs> well, if if they had not given any sort of explanation for it, I would have hand waved it away as the tuba guy who can freeze fire. Fine. Yeah. Um, they we find out this group is is very religious. They don't even wear fireman outfits. They wear priest robes and and like choir boy outfits. Shinra basically comes in. He's like, I want to fight. That'll be fun. Let's just fight. And the captain's like, yeah, all right. So one of the other guys who came with him from the second, he has to go first and he fights Rekka. And his whole thing is he's afraid of fire. And as he gets scared, he creates fire missiles around him that shoot off. And he's like, you got to leave me alone. I'm going to shoot. Um, but he's also huge. He's like this giant guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's always so, got his eyes closed, so we know that he's going to open them at some point, and it's going to get yeah. real serious. I like him. Oh, yeah. I like that guy. <laughs> um, and he fought, fights Rekka basically until they decide that's enough. Uh, the bubble guy from Fifth is also there, and he's like, "I don't, I don't want to fight. I, I blow bubbles." I'm like, "All right, you don't have to fight." <laughs> so then Shinra and Arthur fight Burns at the same time. Arthur goes first, and his sword doesn't cut him. Shinra goes second. And does some kicks and stuff, but it doesn't. They lose. Um, I did are... like his explanation of like he stops the blade and he's like, "You swing with the purpose of ending the fight in one swing, but it seems you haven't thought about what happens if that finishing move doesn't work." And then he just nails him. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and so Burns wins. Then. We do see a mysterious man, it's Rekka, uh, talking to a boss in a phone booth about the Infernals. And then Habana reveals to Obi that it's it's insects that turns people into Infernals. If they bite you, you'll turn into one. And so the bad guy has these bugs. <laughs> Jeremy. 
when I heard this, I was like, this is a joke, right? This is a red herring. This can't be the way you make infernals. You like I was nope. exactly the same way. Yep. And they does the bug it. just bite you or does it enter you? I, I think it burrows inside of you. I, I think you're right. I think it goes okay. inside. Yeah. True clothes, by the way. In an instant. Yeah, yeah, right but, away. But anyways. Sorry, Trey. Anyway. Uh, there, the first is called to a fire. Shinra and Arthur are forced to stand guard, and they're not allowed to participate. And they see a man get turned into an infernal. Luckily, uh, and they chase instead of dealing with the infernal, they chase after the guy uh, who did it. And when they get into the, uh, they put him into the alley. The only people there are Rekka and Kareem. And then also, um, Tamaki shows up. So they they then go back to the first and they investigate their rooms they go into Kareem's room they find a bug in there and they're like oh it must be him and he walks in and he's like actually no I put that in the, my drawer to trick you um, so I could see if you were investigating and you were <laughs> so, so now like, we're best friends way to, yeah. way to lay he, it out on the table like that and he's mm-hmm. like now that I know what you guys were doing there I know that Rekka is the bad guy and then they show Tamaki is helping bring children into an abandoned building <laughs> with Rekka. And is like, this is cool. And Rekka is like, hey, I'm actually evil. He crushes Tamaki's spine for a few minutes. Um, to to her, I'm guessing, yeah. yeah. And then turns the mother of the children into an infernal. And he starts talking about, like, I have to find the pilot light. He turns one of the kids into an infernal, but he doesn't become an infernal. He gets powers instead. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, is that where everyone with psycho connect or pyrokinetic powers is getting them? Are they just failed infernals? I don't know. That would be a very interesting twist. I like that. Right. But Tamaki gets upset, and then Rekka gets upset with Tom Tamaki for not being able to take the blame he was going to frame her so he starts beating her he's like oh i have to kill you and i feel real bad about it but i'm (laughs) like he's ranting crazily um and she screams and her ears go into the sky and shinra who's flying around looking for them uh sees the ears and he comes flying in and he saves her and he has this big battle with Rekka, which is very cool. And and honestly, yeah. I like this arc because this fight was so cool. He comes mm-hmm. he comes yeah. flying in like a superhero. They have this big fight, arms versus legs. Um, we do find out you can overheat, so there is a limit on powers in this world if you use too much. Your fire is fueled by the oxygen in your body. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Your blood carries quite a bit of oxygen in it, so I can buy that. No. I mean, you're right. The blood does carry it, but that means you're expending it, and you're right. expending it at a horrible rate. Horrible rate. So that's why the fights can't go on like very that. long. But the no, just like the jet engine that they're using, like his feet. Oh no, no, there'd yeah. be nothing. No, but he's a or or a borealis flame. <laughs> he's a I know, bird. right? <laughs> <laughs> or you got the, it. You got the it. The borealis. He, oh, he's, a, he's a he's a Qdoba grilled steak <laughs> flame. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's called the Adola Burst, which does come up in the fight. He's go. like, you have the Adola Burst. And he's like, okay, yeah. I, I, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> still going to beat your face in. Right. Um, yeah. It, uh, and also, I loved how he kind of had to think on his feet <laughs> uh, as far as uh, the fight, because he was at a standstill, if not just lo- losing a little bit. And he's like, okay, what? is my power play here and he's like i'm mobile he's basically a boxer and he's not used to aerial combat let alone from different directions and so uh, i really really liked this fight this was uh, not only flashy but it was really well done as far as the story beat as well literally in midair shoves his foot into his mouth and yeah drives him into the ground uh, yeah. with a foot on fire uh, yeah yeah uh, that's why he... I'm saying these guys are just on a totally different level than humans. After he wins the fight, well, you don't know all humans are like this. You know, maybe you all can, humans can... in this world can go through concrete. You can put you an Adola, an Adola burst foot in your mouth and shove your head through multiple. You don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Adola do. burst. No. I've, I've, yeah, spicy food. I've watched the episodes. <laughs> Yes, uh, I watched them too, and I don't know what the Dola burst is. They even no, say they explained it. The they burst, said it's an it's, infinite. 
infinite no, fire. Said, in the dub, they said it was more pure, but we really don't understand how they're different. That's what oh, they, no, they literally said. Yeah, they, they said an Adola burst. An Adola burst is powering the infinite power generator that's powering all of Tokyo. No, no, One yeah, adult. but they don't explain how it's different. What it is. Well, we have, no, but we it's have an infinite go. energy source. We have That's what that means. <laughs> it's an infinite energy source, that which means he doesn't have to said. limit everybody else. I mean, they did. I mean, it's a power supply that they said it's it's basically going to it powers all of Tokyo. I can't remember exactly what they called it, but in the sub, they implied it was basically basically a a power source that had no end. It was basically the implication. So my question is, is that does that mean they have some sort of a dola burst person that they've trapped in the basement? That's what I think. Thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's my guess. Huh. That is actually my guess too. Um in the fight, Tomoki's clothes get burnt off because <laughs> of course uh, fan service. <laughs> so when Shinra wins, uh Rekka tries to get back up and he actually starts catching himself on fire while trying he's overheating so much. And Kareem comes in and freezes his arms. And then as he's like, I'm going to get through this ice. And he's just freezing himself more until he's fully encased in ice. And they're like, okay, we're going to take him back for interrogation. And then a sniper shoots a fire arrow through his chest. Um, and we find, this is a new group of villains. They're clad in all in white. And they're, they were, Rekka was working for them. And he was working for the evangelist. And this is his evangelist's group. And then they try to kill the rest of them, but they take off one guy's arm. The guy in the hat shows up, and he gets his arm taken off. But then they they scare the sniper away, and everyone's fine. And then Which Arthur's the sniper power is probably one of the coolest for me. Like that, this was this is pretty uh, creative as far as like uh, a firepower. Mm-hmm. A bow, a bow and arrow is pretty okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Not sure. as cool as a tuba, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then Arthur is wandering the desert because he didn't know where to go. Because <laughs> he was lost. I really thought they were implying that he had something else he was trying to do, like something important. He had this look on his face of so much intent. I thought it. Yeah, I thought it was. I honestly wrote it down like, oh, a new subplot. Like Arthur's on some secret mission, and then yeah. the next episode he's back, and they're like, remember when you got lost in the desert? I'm like, all right, I guess that was just a joke. I didn't uh, like that. When I heard that, I then thought back to the look on his face, and I think it's more of a look of confusion. Like, where am I? <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> all right, so all the captains are called by the Emperor of Japan. Um, who who's is also all- the Pope. Who's also yeah. a Pope, who's also <laughs> the leader of the fire forces. Um, and Shinra and Tomoki are taken because they're talking about the incident with Rekka and what they witnessed. They, they, this is where they see the thermal power plant. And yes, I do think there's something going on there. I don't have the same understanding Jeremy has with it, but that's fine. Well, I'm sure we'll get clarifications <laughs> later. Um, we meet all the captains. Uh, there's Honda, the second captain, Giovanni, the third captain, Hog, Hog, the fourth captain, Huange, the sixth captain, and the emperor's name is Raffle, the third. Uh, oh, God. But I laughed so hard when I saw that. <laughs> the most important captain in, that we're going to meet here is the seventh captain, whose name is Shinmon, because he's about to become the major character of the next arc. And he mm. basically comes in and... And the the Pope Emperor is like, hey, yeah, we're going to investigate what's going on with this. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm out. You guys all suck. I'm out. (laughs) And he leaves. Um, So what do you guys think of Shinmon? I I like that he's working with them because this is the organization that's that's on a national level taking care of the infernal issue. But he has no loyalty or any sort of like uh feeling of duty towards the fire force and he's going to do things his way and uh, or it, it, it seems as though he had no training it was just that his town needed py- uh pyrokinetics to yeah, take care they, of the combustion so they said they were just like the local firemen and they got absorbed into the fire force yeah 
Mm-hmm. So I, I I actually really like this character later. At this moment, I think he's just a jerk because he's like, well, we didn't swear any sort of allegiance, and he just walks out. And what do they call him? Like pre something? Uh, yeah, proto uh, nationalist. No, yeah, proto nationalist. Yeah, they, they live like in that Edo period part of yeah. Tokyo or something. Yeah. Um, which we'll get we'll get back to. Um, after the the big meeting and talking about the Adola burst and you know what they know about this group. Uh, Shinra goes to the, see the power factory because he's never seen it, and Joker, who was listening in on the whole meeting, uh, appears. Through his and, and is like, "Hey, your 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 brother, he's part of the evangelist group." Um, and then we find out like he is the evangelist, though, isn't he? Doesn't it kind of hint? It that implies he's the that. Yeah. It does imply it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then all the group goes back. They start investigating all the cases of the eighth see if they've ever had any reports about people on white. And the only one they find is from their very first case. Um, uh, and th- then we get a good cooking scene. We get the joke about the apron. Uh, and Shinra tells them, basically, he, he finally, you know, this is what's been going on. This, uh, this is what I know about my brother. And the entire eighth is like, hey, look, you know, we're in. We'll help you find your brother. You're one of us. We're still going to stop the bad guy, but we're going to add your brother to the checklist of things we need to do. And then we get a long backstory about how the 8th was started that we're not going to get into in our recap here. Uh, any thoughts, though, from it? I did. I thought it was good. I, I, yeah. I really liked the scene where he couldn't shoot his friend as he turned into mm-hmm. an infernal mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I thought the... the uh, I liked that we had a backstory... That was not during a fight (laughs) and actually gave some uh, some weight to these characters and really gave some good character growth. And also, I love that uh, it made Maki blush. She's like, oh, you really thought that of me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They they find out this their very first mission. They fought an infernal in in white clothes, and that he had worked for a company that was in the seventh division's territory. So that's where they go next to investigate. And when they get there, Shinmon's like, "I don't care. I don't believe you. You're part of this group, and this group's all corrupt. So please leave." And then they get a fire alarm in their in their section of town for an infernal. And it's a guy he had literally just passed on the street. About talking about getting a drink, um, and he goes and they in this part of town <laughs> you don't just kill the infernal, you destroy the dang town. <laughs> he like blows up houses uh, because instead of living in fear, they're like we celebrate the death because that's what it is, and and this is how we do it by causing mass destruction whenever this yeah. happens. It's a send off, yep. and it kind of makes sense in a way to like give give these people uh, a sense of. He called it a festival. And like when you die, it's not just you dying in misery. Like this is all done for you. Right. So for some people, that would be enough to make them be like, oh, wow, that moment is coming where I might get a festival. Not not I might burn forever to death. Like (laughs) just in horrible pain. The afterwards, the eighth helps rebuild the town, which is what they always do after this event. And then so the eighth decides to volunteer and help. Uh, we get to see everyone kind of using their special powers to help in a special way. And this kind of changes Shinmon's attitude, and he agrees that he will help them investigate. Shinra comes and asks him to speak with Captain Obi in the alleyway. When he goes to the alleyway, he sees Sh- um, Obi and Hinawa talk about how they made the Infernals and the plan's going perfectly. So he goes nuts and starts attacking Obi and Hinawa, who don't know what he's talking about. And basically, it becomes this one guy versus all of the eight. Um, he beats everyone. And then Obi comes out wearing his full gear and in a totally plausible and relatable way, manages to go toe-to-toe with him in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, um, the sta- stare me. I, I feel bad just from the stare you gave me. <laughs> uh, one thing I uh, we didn't mention is this is the only character so far we've run into that has second and third generation powers. Like he can not only yeah. create flame, but he can then control it in very unique ways. Um, and also he's Neo because he can stop bullets with his mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, yeah, I like this character. I I really enjoyed watching him. Uh, I, I liked the festival thing. I didn't yeah. like the house destruction thing, but the idea that we're going to celebrate these people instead of mourn them was uh, was an interesting idea. Yeah, he had. Uh, um, he was more of an anti-hero than anybody else, and I thought that was really cool because you you get a glimpse into his life uh, in the sense that he has to keep killing people that he passes on the street, and these people celebrate him and they love him and they give him stuff and they want to drink with him and they want to be friends with him, and then he never knows he might have to plunge his hand through one of their chests the next day or that day. Always, that's why he's so always distant. Distance yeah, and so it, it all makes so much sense. And then also his perspective on the fire force, because the only reason he's forced to do this kind of stuff is because they didn't step up and take care of the job here. So he had to do it. So all of his motivation seems really well founded. I actually really like him as a character. Um, but the only thing that stops him is his buddy, who is uh, <laughs> basically crippled because of already over over expending his own abilities coming in to try and say no come on don't be such a hot-headed can't you tell this is ridiculous there's something wrong here we have to see what's going on which yeah, makes but... me wonder um is our pyrokinetics all infernals they just are able to control their flames like that boy right mm -hmm. because he's he's obviously burning similar to an infernal just slowly yep mm. I uh, to add to what Jeremy was saying, I also really like that when he finds out about the, and he thinks Obi created the Infernal, he's he's very upset about it because when he kills him, he's like, "Hey, this is this is just part of daily life here." But he, he does have a huge emotional connection to these people, even though he tries to keep them distant. And I, I like the idea of this is just how we do it around here, you know. Yeah, we're we're okay with this destroying each other's houses. We all sleep, <laughs> you know. We're a community. We have agreed this is the way we want to do it. And this is how we do it. And so it's like, okay, that's. That works for me. Yeah. Rebuilding it that fast seems a little unrealistic and also expensive, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but like like you said, his his buddy, who honestly, in, especially in his own words, should be the captain of the group, but because he was injured, um, it was put on Shinron's shoulders, and he doesn't want to be the captain. He doesn't feel he's qualified. Yeah, he's powerful, but he's not a leader, and he just doesn't care about things like he thinks he should. Um, where his buddy does, uh, and his buddy at one time was in charge, but and then basically after this fight, his buddy comes out, stops the fight, has to be nursed, and, and Shinmon's like, I'm going to investigate further and find out what really happened. And that's where the episode ends, but the buddy then tells the story of, we had infernals everywhere showing up one night, and we were trying to evacuate the town, and we went and we saw basically a demon which is looks very similar to what Shinra saw in his mm. flashbacks too. Um, it, it's like an infernal, but it's demon shaped, has horns and everything. Um, mm. And he knocked Shinmon away and fought it himself. And that's how he overheated and then kept going so far that his body's partly turned to ash. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's where we stop for these 12 episodes. Um, any final thoughts on those scenes? Okay. It feels like it feels like an abrupt halt on episode twelve. Like normally the arcs, I can't say normally, but sometimes the arcs feel like they've met a really satisfying conclusion where you know the end of a battle and something has been resolved. It, because Shinmon's out there investigating, even though we know that the right beat for the story is going to be that he's going to find out that yeah, the grocery grocery clerk's going to say yeah, of course they were here, and so he's going to come back knowing that. But it still feels weird, like it's still kind of at the, the tapering end of that arc, like it didn't quite complete all the Which, way. I mean, who knows? It, it's not like they were absolutely stopping at this point. You know, this wasn't the end of the season. Um, that's just where yeah. we have to stop, too. Yeah, that's true. And, and it was the white robe guys impersonating them. I don't know how they had the ability to shapeshift. Fire! Fire! Probably, fire yeah, consists. they probably have fire. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh, all right, guys. Uh, let's go to our final reviews. Thoughts on episodes 1 through 12 of Fire Force. Jason? Um, yeah, there's some stuff that really irritates me, but 
there's a lot of stuff uh, that I'm really enjoying about this. Um, it's definitely fun. Uh, this is a solid three for me, and I do look forward to seeing the next 12 episodes uh, with the path and trajectory it's going. I don't see it getting any more than a three uh, by the end, but I look forward to seeing it. Jeremy? Um, I, I think it's, for me, its highs are pretty high. It, it actually does a really good job when it executes things well, but its lows are abysmally low for me. <laughs> like, it's painful. Between this, the the technical uh, power explanation plus what the powers actually do, and then the melodrama, just this mix of melodrama with humor, just it doesn't quite feel like it's the right mixture. It's like the 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 recipe's off a little bit. Like these things can go together. You can have humor humor and melodrama go together, but I just it feels like the the ratios are off a little bit. Um, and sometimes the dialogue just really puts me off. Like the, um, the exposition is so strong sometimes, where they'll have like one character give you the exposition and then. A different character, a few seconds later, maybe even a minute or two, give you the same exposition before then turning around and giving you new exposition about, you know, a different perspective. And that's probably a thing in Shonen. I don't watch too much of it, but that just drives me up the wall. Um, but I, I still enjoyed don't it watch more Bleach. than I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it more than I didn't enjoy it. So I, I, I got to give it a three still. Uh, a three for me, I, I just found it very middle of the road. It's very competent. I think it's doing a, a perfectly fine job at being shown in, but it's not changing the genre like some recent ones have. It's not elevating the genre. Um, it's very happy to sit in the tropes that shown in anime do. The, with the one exception of, I, I think the conspiracy is, is interesting, whereas you know most shown in. The background plot, I feel like, is such an <laughs> unimportant part of the story. I don't really care about what's going on in the fairy tale world. I don't really care about One Piece's world. I just, they rarely strike me. This one, I'm like, okay, what's uh, what's going on with you guys? What's up with that Pope thing, Emperor guy? What's he doing? <laughs> yeah. and, and so I'll, I'll give it that. But yeah, it's, it's really just a three for me because, you know, I wasn't excited to watch it, but I didn't dread watching it either. Um, I, I was hoping for a little bit more after Babylon of a palate cleanser, something to really <laughs> just take hold of my attention. This isn't really it, but we'll see how the next half does. Oof, that was heavy. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, so yeah, the next anime we're watching <laughs> is the next twelve episodes of Fire Force, so thirteen through twenty-four. We're going to finish the first season and then come back together and talk about it then. Thank you all for listening. If you would like to comment on Fire Force without spoiling what's coming up for us, or, or but you can tell us how wrong we are, um, you can <laughs> le leave a comment on our Twitter at Baka Podcast. You can leave a comment in our email, the Anime Baka Club at gmail.com, or leave a comment wherever you found this podcast and it gets back to us as far as I know. All right, let's say goodbye. Thanks for listening. Oh no, it's my lucky lecture lure. Sayonara. <laughs>